I have a question for you. Are you a lord of tools or master of rules? Do you heavily rely on tools or understand the core principles of threat hunting and the required skill set? Why does this question even matter? Because if we have the right skills, picking up the right tools is a walk in the park. In this video, we will dive into must-have skills for every threat hunter. If you are a beginner, stick around till the end. I've got some tips on how to start, just for you. Hi, I am Isam Aslahi and you are in for another episode of Cyber Threat Hunt 101 series by Nothing Cyber. Subscribe, share this video and hit that notification bell to stay in the loop. Threat hunting is a human driven process. It's the job of a skilled hunter armed with different tools. Tools are essential, no doubt, but they are only as good as the hand that uses them. A strong foundation in set of skills will set you apart. Cybersecurity and threat hunting are massive fields and there is no way to cover every inch. But at minimum, we need a few essential skills to level up our hunting game. Core security skill set, visualization and analysis, scripting and task automation. Wait, one more, advanced analytics and AI. But it's not for everyone and not for every team. It depends on the specific roles, goals, resources, complexity of our environment and situation. And of course, the type of the threats we aim to hunt. But the other three fundamental skills and techniques remain essential. Let's kick it off with the core cybersecurity skill set. Threat hunting requires a mix of cybersecurity skills. The main one is threat analysis and detection, beyond question, but it doesn't stand alone. How can we look for signs of a particular attack if we have yet to learn how adversaries perform that attack? We can crack a trick without knowing the magic. We benefit from thinking like attackers. It's essential to see our own digital wonderland through the eyes of adversaries, because it helps us anticipate and defend against their moves and strategies. This requires a deep understanding of vulnerabilities, exploits, attack vectors, and adversaries' TTPs beyond a defined scope. These vulnerabilities and attacks come in different forms and from various sources and may affect different systems and networks. For this reason, a hunt can have a broader or even no scope. We can have a focused threat hunt to investigate a suspected attack or to monitor a specific infrastructure. But as far as our capabilities and resources allow, it's better to look for threats in every corner of our digital territory. Just like hackers, they never limit their attacks to a specific scope, right? In other words, we must investigate everything that we believe may contain the risk of a threat. And to get started, we must find everything linked to our network first. Asset discovery skills help us identify physical assets like servers and workstations and logical ones like data, applications and services. They are all could be potential targets for attackers. So attack surface management allows us to uncover all the possible ways an attacker could try to access these assets and the potential entry points they might use to walk into our digital space. Threat intelligence, OSINT, and dark web monitoring significantly enhance attack surface management and threat hunting with additional context, early alerts, and indicator of potential or even planned attacks. These skills constantly keep us informed, proactive, and well prepared ahead of time. Now we have discovered assets and potential threats and gathered all valuable intelligence. We need to figure out how each threat and associated risk may impact us. That's where threat modeling and risk assessment come into the picture. Threat modeling is a structured process for identifying and evaluating potential threats and vulnerabilities in a system, application, or environment. In attack-centric approach, we step into the shoes of potential attackers. For example, modeling how they might breach our system via SQL injection or cross-site scripting attacks. Technology-centric threat modeling focuses on specific technologies, assessing how an attacker could gain unauthorized access to them. Data-centric threat modeling, as the name suggests, centers on protecting sensitive information. We assess how data leakage can occur, for instance, via phishing or insider threats. Finally, 
we could examine the process flows, such as payment processing in an e-commerce platform to identify potential security threats, issues, and gaps. Have you noticed something? Yes, you are right. Risk assessment is integral to threat modeling, the chance that a specific security threat or attacks occurs, and the severity of its consequences. What do we have till now? Let's list all the required skills till this point. Adversaries' tactics and vulnerabilities understood. Asset discovery and attack surface management identify targets and entry points. Threat intelligent, OSINT, and dark web monitoring offer context and early alerts. And finally, threat modeling and risk assessment evaluate threats and impacts. Hmm, that makes sense. Any more? Do you want more? Here you go. Knowing threats is crucial, but we may only be able to spot them if we identify and understand the typical and benign patterns, activities, and behavior of our environment, systems, and users. It's kinda the art of knowing the good, the bad, and the ugly. A common method involves gathering and analyzing network, user, and systems data over time to study the typical communication, behavior, characteristics, and formulate a baseline. This baseline helps detect deviations and anomalies that could signal a threat. Picture this. We analyze our network traffic over time and make a profile for standard communication patterns, common ports and protocols, and data transfer rates. Suddenly, we observe an unexplained spike in data transfer rates on a specific port. The same goes for users. For example, a user logging in at unusual hours or accessing sensitive files they don't typically use. Similarly, unauthorized processes running on a server, which are not part of the standard application stack, suggest a breach or malware infection. Wow, we just hunted a few attacks using behavioral analysis and anomaly detection. What would be next? We should alert incident response and digital forensics team. But the immediate actions could be preserving digital evidence and handling the incident. Do we need these skills too? Indeed! The possibility of encountering an ongoing cyber attack or a data breach is a constant concern during a threat hunt, so it's necessary to know how to deal with the situation. The aim is not to conduct full-fledged forensic or incident response, but we should have basic skills for preserving digital evidence, particularly volatile data, and handling incident at a certain level, to buy time for our leading DFIR teams to get into the action. Let's say we should act more like a first responder. First responder refers to skilled individuals who swiftly respond to IT incidents that may require further investigation. Makes sense. Let's have these skills in our basket. Hi, I am Maysam, a turret hunter, and it seems I must be a jack of all trades. What? Who said that? Please don't listen to him and don't panic. This is a team's collective capabilities rather than everyone having expertise in every domain. We must be familiar with all, gain proficiency in a few, and become masters of only one. That's it. We need pie-shaped skills. A skill shape is a metaphor used to describe the skills profiles of individuals or teams. Some experts recommend T-shaped professionals and teams as their capabilities are not limited to a niche domain. In a T-shape, the horizontal bar represents a broad range of general skills and knowledge that enable us to collaborate across various disciplines and apply our knowledge beyond our main area of expertise. In contrast, vertical STEM represents a profound and a specialized expertise in a specific areas. This shape may work perfectly for many teams, but in my experience, it may fall short for a distinct group, hunters. Assume we receive a threat intelligence about a new fileless malware that targets Windows operating systems. A generic knowledge at horizontal bar won't help to look for potential signs of infection. For instance, we must understand how a fileless malware misuses PowerShell to execute malicious code directly in memory. Then only we can monitor PowerShell activities to look for suspicious scripts. To keep it simple, hunters need to have pie-shaped skills, to have expertise in understanding the cyber attacks 
and to analyze the data and hunt them down. We can develop more skills in depth over time, but believe me, it would not be easy to maintain. So, be good about a few things and have faith in other team members. Collaborate and communicate. Together we share, together we win. And don't worry if you are new to this domain. There's always a place for you in the Threat Hunters clan. If you are new to cybersecurity and threat hunting, start by building solid foundations. Learn about operating systems and networks and explore applications and databases to understand their functions and how they work together. Gain basic knowledge in virtualization to set up simple virtual machines. Develop basic coding skills to work with scripts and automations. After gaining a grasp of the basics, you can start to learn about cybersecurity frameworks, best practices, system hardening, and then dive into the cyber threats and cyber attacks. How to do all of these? Simple. Take online courses and tutorials. Read and watch. There are many excellent books, articles, blogs, and YouTube channels to learn about IT and cybersecurity. Remember to attend industry conferences and events actively. This is a great way to learn about technologies and trends and to network with other IT and security professionals. And finally, the most important one, get hands-on experience. The best way to learn about anything is just by doing it. In the next episode, we will discuss simple tools, resources, and knowledge bases that enable us to bring these core cybersecurity skills into threat hunting actions. Stay tuned.